Hello, my name is Tom and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my first monthly wrap up. Um, this will be for December 2021. I know we're well into the new year and I'm still talking about December. I have five books to talk to you about today, so this is only going to be a quick video. I haven't decided whether I'm going to carry on doing monthly wrap ups yet. It may be a case that I do them quarterly or two monthly, depending on how many books I have to talk to you about. The first book today is The Lost Girls of Camp Forevermore by Kim Fu. I've mentioned this book in a couple of videos because it's a buzzword reading challenge pick. This was a book that I carried over from November, so I finished it quite early on in December, but this took a very long time for me to read. This was not what I was hoping it was going to be, and ultimately I found the ending quite disappointing. We're following a group of young girls on a camp, and something horrific happens whilst they're at this camp, and we then we're jumping back and forth between their adult lives, and we're basically looking at how the trauma from this childhood event is affecting their later lives. If I'd known more about this book, I probably wouldn't have picked it up. It's really not what I would usually read. I misunderstood this as a thriller, and I think I mentioned previously, the first sort of 50-odd pages really do read like a thriller. It suggests that there's almost something happening in the background, um, but there really isn't. Yes, there is a twist ending to a certain extent, I wouldn't go as far to say that it rocked my world. This book was really good for what it was, but I am not the target audience. I do not usually read this sort of thing. So this was a bit of a miss for me, unfortunately. And the other book I have physically is Nosferatu by Joe Hill. I was switching between reading this and listening to the audiobook. I actually DNF'd this a few Christmases ago because it was taking me a long time to get through it, but the audiobook really helped. In this book we are following Victoria McQueen throughout a large portion of her life actually, and she has a sort of ability where she can use her bike to find lost things. We are in sort of an urban fantasy world where people with strong imaginations can use that to affect the real world. And fairly early on in the book, Victoria comes into contact with Charlie Manx, who is another of these magical people. But rather than using the magic for good, he uses it for evil. Charlie Manx uses his old car with the number plate NOS4R2 to take children out of what he perceives to be abusive home environments and take them with him to Christmas land. I read this book at this time of year because it does have a certain amount of Christmas theming, I suppose. But this isn't, this isn't set at Christmas. It's not even set all in one year. It takes place over a really long space of time. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this as a Christmas read because all of the Christmassy elements are turned really quite horrifically. For those of you who don't know, Joe Hill is Stephen King's son. I hope that's right. And this book did read really King. Um, and there are also some direct references to some of Stephen King's books. So if you like Stephen King, I would say especially more on the sort of it end of things. It, Shining, Doctor Sleep, that's the sort of end this is most akin to. So if you like those sorts of things, I would recommend this. And if you don't, steer clear of it. And now we're moving on to the books that I don't have to hold up. I think all of these now are audiobooks that I listened to whilst I was at work. So sometimes when I'm at work I listen to books, sometimes I listen to podcasts. But for the 
for December, I decided to listen to some Christmas books, which again, I don't normally do. I'm not that into seasonal reading. But the first one that I listened to was Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. I've seen many adaptations of this book, but I have never read it, never read the original. And it was a really easy listen, really easy read, because I already knew all of the words. I was surprised by how precise to the original text the adaptations I have seen have been. I don't think there was a word of dialogue that I haven't heard before in one of the many films that have been made based on this book. And in some ways that was a shame because I like to go into a book where I've already seen the film expecting some more depth, expecting some extra, but also it was really nostalgic. So depending on how you feel about that sort of feeling, that would probably inform whether you would want to read this book. If you aren't a big rereader, for example, this probably isn't worth your time. But it was really well written. It's the first Charles Dickens I've ever read, and it did make me really want to read some more of his stuff. A lot of his books are a lot longer than this one, which makes me slightly nervous. Again, I may listen to them whilst I'm at work, because they are classics. I can sort of let them wash over me whilst I'm doing, doing other things. But yes, it was exactly as I expected, which in some ways is good and in some ways is slightly disappointing. The next book I have to talk to you about is A Boy Called Christmas by Matt Haig. Now, this is an alternative or a retelling of the origin story of Father Christmas. Um, it is middle grade. It was a very easy listen, very easy read, but it was also quite pleasant. We follow a boy who is nicknamed Christmas, whose father leaves him at home with his aunt when he goes off on an expedition to try and prove that elves exist, to try and find the place where the elves live. And the boy called Christmas is very unhappy with his aunt because she is very unpleasant with him. And he basically leaves to try and find his father. This book is very much like other origin stories for Santa, but there are some nice sort of folklorish elements and the addition of, in particular, other creatures that I quite enjoyed. And it goes a little bit into the structure of elven society, for example, and that sort of triggered the high fantasy nerd in me. So yeah, I... I did quite enjoy this. It was it was a very joyful read. And the last book I have to talk to you about for December was a reread. So I quite often listen to rereads on audio whilst I'm at work because I don't have to pay as much attention to them. And the book that I reread was Ravensgate by Anthony Horowitz. I read this book a long time ago. I must have been when I was 11 or 12 when I first read this. And it was one of the first audiobooks I ever owned. So I've never actually read this book physically. But I have had the desire of late to continue with the series. So I wanted to reread this first book. It is the first in a series of five books. I believe it's called The Power of Five because it follows these five children who have the power to save the world, essentially. Raven's Gate follows the first of these children, who gets caught red-handed trying to rob a warehouse. And as part of his conviction, he can choose between going to a juvenile institution, or he can go through something called the Leaf Project, where he is fostered by a rural family for a period of time and is expected to provide labour in the form of farm work and things like that. However, it turns out that his foster family have a different plan for what they're going to do with him when he arrives. And it all stems around the fact that he has a magic within him that has been present since he was very young but he denies and 
there are people out there who want to use him for this. Okay, well, that's all the books. Um, talking about audiobooks makes this a little bit more difficult because I can't hold it up in front of you. And it also means I can't double check the characters' names before I start. But if you like this video and you want more like this, um, let me know in the comments. I reckon this is going to be a bit short, so I may in future condense a few months together and do it that way. But yeah, December was a pretty good reading month for me. I'm quite happy with the majority of the books that I read. And if you want to join me for future good reading months, please consider subscribing to this channel. That's everything I have for you today. Um, see you next time.